Right, hey lads and lasses, and welcome to Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. I do like that. It's a very aggressive grip, I'd just say. Just a really, really nice, different type of grip. Right, so let's have a, let's have a quick game of 3 0 one Gives me double twelve. Yep, two darts. Oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Three or one and eight darts. This is the follow on video from the one that we made a few days ago about the mechanical throw, the stance, the address, etc. We said we we're going to have an in-depth look at it. And what we did was we did an in-depth look at the foot position. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the upper torso, uh, the mechanical throw, which is still, again, even now, different to what a lot of people do. A little bit of an update while we're here, because loads and loads of people have asked me. Due to this corona thing, the publishing company, the printing company that we're going to do the cards for me. The first one, um, they promised me the cards, promised me the cards, this corona thing came in, um, said they couldn't deliver, they'd all um, packed up and gone home basically, so I took that job off them, gave it to another printers, uh, this was a, a little firm that were working from home, so obviously the, the corona thing didn't have, or I thought wouldn't have that sort of effect on them. A couple of weeks later, where's my order, where's my order, where's my order? So for the last three months, I've been being messed about something cruel and it's got to a point now where I've got to make a decision. So I'm, I'm in two minds and I'm going to take a little bit more time over this, but I don't know whether to actually just produce the um, checkout cards on a PDF and then just offer it out, I'll email it to you, etc, etc, or I don't know, I don't know which way to do it at the moment. Either that or I might try, try again, because the second one I was going to do was, I thought was a really good idea, because what I was going to do was it would put it like a, a calendar, I was going to have it like a calendar, so it had um, a Dynamite Dave picture in the middle of it, and then down the outsides with the different checkouts, and then also to go with that, you got a card that you could put in your wallet or your darts case or your back pocket or whatever with a similar with similar info with the same information on it basically. So I wanted to do it really nice so I bought you'd get one for hanging it next to your dartboard and one for in your back pocket. So right, so let's go over into the first section. And what we're gonna do in the first section is because there's gonna be people brand new here, we've had subscribers over the last few weeks and the last few days. So just in case you're brand new here and you've hit the subscribe button and you've hit the notification bell. Right, so to start off the Dynamite Dave stance address and mechanical throw, what we're going from first is the building blocks, which is your solid stance. A lot of people we see are standing like this to the hockey, like this with a leg out here, a leg out there, and with the foot up off the floor like this. Where that's bad is it inherently drives all the weight onto your front foot and makes you unstable and unbalanced floor. You've got, what that means is the least of your shoe, because if you're leaning forward, it looks like it's flat, but the weight is all on the outside of your foot. As you can see here, if you lean forward, all my weight is now going onto the outside of my left leg. So what I'm doing then is, as you can see, 
I'm not very stable. So the Dynamite Dave stance eliminates all that by becoming very simple and very straightforward and very very easy to do. So first of all what we do initially is we stand with our two feet straight onto the occhi as if we stood at the bar. So that just tells you there that you're getting your feet absolutely straight. So they're in line, not one back, one forward or one this way, they're exactly in line. So then what you do is you transfer that to here. So you've got your foot up to the hockey and all you do is turn your foot out and all that does is just turns your knee slightly out so you can adjust the way that you're putting your weight onto your foot. We're standing with our feet shoulder width apart and shoulder width apart is like this underneath your armpits not out here like this it's just under your armpit so it's where you're nice and comfortable as if you were stood at the bar if you were standing at the bar or you stood talking to someone you wouldn't stand like that you stand nice and relaxed and natural just like that and st stood standing bolt upright so straight upright So then we've got the basic stance there, what we're looking for is, so basically straight up the centre of your body is where you want the, um, the centre of the hockey. What you need to be is you need to be right in the centre of the hockey, not over to this side and not over to this side. You should be throwing from the centre of the hockey when you're throwing at the centre of the board. This is how we achieve the straight down the line throw. So again, feet dead straight. All you're doing is just moving the weight onto your front foot to lock your hip out. So from standing straight, all you're doing is transferring a tiny bit of weight onto the front just to plant that front foot. We're not lifting the heel of the back foot up off the floor. All we're doing is standing bolt upright, just leaning forward till that lip leg here, till the hip locks out. Once that lip hip locks out, then you're in a nice solid and stable stance, which is bolt upright. And that, base of the Dynamite Dave stance, is the feet and where it actually connects you to the floor. Right, so here we are back from that one. So you've seen the way that the feet actually affect the way that you stance and your stability in that stance. That is what is very important. This is where your accuracy and your consistency is going to come from, is all these little elements being knitted together. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the new area, which is the upper torso. Your upper torso is very, very important that this is in the correct position because we get so many people and it was mentioned in the first section there about people leaning too much weight on the front foot by trying to lean forward in a mistaken belief that the closer you get to the board the more accurate you're going to be because that just is not the amount of people that do that sort of um, thing for the wrong reasons like people throw the darts fast hard to the board because they believe that the less amount of time that they are in that they have in the air the more accurate they're going to be rubbish absolute rubbish people who stand straight bolt upright and have a slow arm speed are just as accurate as people who try and throw the darts through the back of the board right so now we've done the foot position what we're doing is we're now moving up to the upper body Going through the same sort of thing, this is how you set yourself up when you first do it. After a while it will become perfectly natural to you and you'll just automatically set up this way. Again, we're standing bolt upright. Dead straight. No, not this. Not this. Not with the head over here. With the head perfectly straight up. And what we do is we, we just stand in our position, get ourselves onto the hockey. And it's the arm from here, comes straight out in front. When it comes straight out in front like that, naturally, it goes in front of your face. So you stood 90 degrees to the board, arm comes up, it comes in front of your face. So what it would do is it would block your vision. Then what you do is you allow the shoulders to turn out very slightly till that dart comes to the side of your face. And it is literally from there to there. And then the dart should then naturally come to the side of your face. So as the arm comes up, the hand's in front of the face. We allow the shoulders to rotate out to fetch that hand just to the side of your face. So it's literally a centimetre away from, if you had a pair of glasses on, it's just a centimetre away from your face so you don't catch your glasses. 
and that is the ideal position that I found. I've, I've spent years and years developing this, as I've said on a million occasions. So it's not just that I've just thought to myself, right, this is how I play darts, this is how everybody else should play darts. This has been done with a lot of research for a working class bloke. Don't forget, I haven't got, I'm not a university graduate. I'm not um, a skeletal specialist or anything like this. This has all been done through research, through me looking at the best way to throw and just because basically I was an engineer when I was a young lad which a lot of people will know if they've seen the Dynamite Dave story and what have you and that's where all this logical mechanical thinking comes from it just means just it just makes absolutely perfect common sense to me it just sounds sensible you know that if this if, if you do this like a mathematician will tell you if you calculate something one way it always works out that that is the answer 2 plus 2 is all, will always be 4. 4 plus 4 will always be 8. 4 plus 4 will never be 9. It will always be 8. And it's always like a logical way of thinking, and that's how I think in a logical way. Right, so now we've talked about the upper torso, what we'll do now is we'll go on to the mechanical throw, which is, this is probably going to be the most in-depth part of it and the longest section of this video. Right, so what we'll do is we'll go on to the mechanical throw, and uh, we'll go and have a look at a short video which will show you the mechanical throw, show you the way to get into the position and everything. Then what we'll do is we'll have a chat afterwards when we come back from having a look at that. So let's go and watch that video right now. Right, so now what we're doing is we're moving on to the actual mechanical throw itself and the way that the mechanical throw works. Simplicity in itself, and this is why it's so accurate and it's so consistent and it just, it's absolutely... Once you get used to it, it's minutes to fix when something goes wrong because you will automatically know that something's wrong and you will automatically know what is wrong because there aren't that many elements in it to try and get right. So we set ourselves up on the hockey. I'll do it left-handed so then it's like in a mirror for you. So we're stood, as we do, thorax neutral, stood up nice and straight. We just look over our shoulder, be it your left shoulder or your right shoulder, right at the bull's eye. What we do is we turn the arm out and fetch the arm up. So your arm should naturally then come up in a straight line right through the double top, the treble 20, the bull's eye, the treble 3 and the double 3. Like that. And that is as your hand is coming in. With your hand open it should come to the side of your face. Then what we do is we do the OK motion which then will bring your hand slightly where you hold the darts in front of your eye. That comes up, you allow the shoulders to turn out slightly so as the dart comes to the side of your face. The reason we do this is twofold. It means that you can increase and decrease your arm speed to give you more loft to do what they call stacking on, which is what you've seen Phil Taylor do. It also gives you a longer swing. So instead of what a lot of people are doing is they're going like this to here and then throwing the darts out, you've got a much better. Look at the difference between that and that. See that's hitting my face. The difference between this here, keeping the wrist straight and coming in front of the face where I'm actually hitting my face here. So the dart also is then blocking my vision, which is another massive thing that people do. It's called, it's what I call Right, so moving on from there That is the way to get that element of it right And then when you come to do the darts It's literally arm up, perfectly horizontal Perfectly vertical And it's just a tick tock motion And all you're doing is looking directly at the target And placing the darts where you want them to go You're not throwing them at the board you're placing them in the board where you want them to go and that is where the state of mind of that as well as with the, the, the um, inherently basic and very simple way of throwing means that you are then able to just put the darts where you want them to go and they won't be going off over into the 1 and the 18 or into the 5 and the 12 they'll be going where you want them to go still going to be a, an element of inaccuracy like there is in any human um, any human endeavour, but it's going, that, that amount of accuracy is going to be minute compared to what it is now. Right, so that is the mechanical throw.
Right, so now we're back from having a look at the mechanical throw. You can, you've, you've, you've seen how it actually is built and how it works. You can see how everything is relaxed, nice and easy. There's no uh, panic in it. There's no this sort of thing. Try to get the darts to the board because all that does is it puts a shake in your arm and what have you. You've just got to, everything's got to be relaxed. And if you throw darts this way, it's like it's like having a bath. It's lovely. It's like relaxing, and you and you just and it's just dead easy. You're just plopping those darts into the board. And as I explained in the video, you're placing the darts in the board. You're not throwing them at the board. You're not flinging them. You're not just chucking them. What you're doing is with your mind's eye. You're putting the darts where you want them to go and that level of concentration because you're nice and still and what have you will be a lot higher even in a very relaxed mode so as you saw in the video you've got that lovely stance and it's just that dead simplicity in itself it's getting that forearm nice and level obviously as your arm comes out your forearm lifts up but it's here where it matters from here to where you release here if you look my my arm here at the bottom of the screen, you can see that stays perfectly level and that is where the dart's gone. Dart's gone now. And then after that, that arm will lift up, but that's irrelevant. But that is just your follow through. And the reason for that is your follow through means that your arm, as you're releasing the dart, is still running at full speed. The worst thing in the world that you can do is like some people have a stabby throw and they stop the arm like this as you're delivering the dart forward if you're if you have one of those stabby throws your actual arm is decelerating as you let go of the dart so because your arm is decelerating as you let go of the dart your brain pushes the dart up in the air you push it with your fingers and that's where you get a lot of these people who've got this sort of throw with them because it's short and they haven't got a proper follow through also, you'll see people when they come from the front of the face, and this is explained in that little video, when they come from the front of the face, you've got from there to there to release the dart. If you come from the side of your face, you've got from here, which is right at the back of your ear here. I know I'm looking at you at the moment, but it's right from here. So your arm's level, and your arm can come right back here and still be delivered. So your arm is going at the same speed over that top as that dart is let go of. And the data is going at the same speed as it is as it comes over the top. If you've got a stabby throw, as you get to here, your arm is starting to decelerate. Because you're slowing it down for that, that stop at the end. That's why you have to have a, a, a follow through. And you get people who are doing this and all that does is it knackers your elbow up. It hurts your wrist. How much more simple and more majestic, how much more easier is that? And that is literally my arm speed when I throw darts. It's not like this, it's, it's like this. And the darts go to the same place as they do when people fling them as hard as they can. Still go to the same place. Mine go in a lovely arc. It's not like when I do this, I'm throwing them right up in the air for them to drop into the board because they're going that slow. They just go in the same arc, lovely shallow arc, right the way over into the board. From the hand all the way out, straight the way out into the all full path, nice arc into the board. And that's what you're looking for and that's what you will achieve if you use the Dynamite Dave way. It might it takes some effort, it's, it's a, as I say in all my videos, especially all my coaching videos when I think when I go to do the conclusion as I always say to people, this is your path, this is your journey. I can put you on the right path. So a journey can have many paths with many starts. I can put you onto the right path to start that journey. I can encourage you along the way. I can pop up down that road. I can pop up in different places and say to you, don't take this fork, take that fork. Just keep heading in a straight direction. Just keep the faith, keep going, keep that thing, that nice tick-tock motion People, what they'll do is they'll send to me for a second or third coaching video and I'll turn around and say, you've done everything that I've told you to told you to do apart from, and then that element is usually the one that is stopping them from getting to where they want to get to. Right, so if you want any coaching from Dynamite Dave to get this, to get the Dynamite Dave way right, 
or if you're struggling with one element of your throw and you want me to advise you on that, that's no problem. All you do is contact me at djlewellyn 123 outlookcom The email address will be down here in the description. So if you send an email to that email address, I'll send you all the details. Um, and also, it's very affordable for the common like working class fella. There's a lot of pros out there that do coaching and they're charging anything up to £250 an hour. If you contact me, you'll see that mine is a fraction of that, an absolute fraction of it. So if you want a, any coaching, it's well within the grasp of thinking of the normal working class chap. So down here, dj.llewellyn123outlook.com. There's several services that I offer, which I've outlined in other videos, which is you've got, at the moment we can't do it. So we've got face-to-face -face coaching, where you come to me. Um, I provide this, uh, a coaching session for you. Those coaching sessions could be anything from an hour long to several days, as in the Steve Lamore story. I do online face-to-face -face coaching over WhatsApp or um, Messenger, video messenger, etc. Any of those formats. I also do coaching videos, which are the most popular. These are what most people have because of the value for money. And also you can go back and you can watch them time and time and time again. So once you've got yourself into a certain place, you can go back and watch it again. Make a video of yourself and think, right, that's where I'm going wrong. And that's another fantastic thing about the Dynamite Dave way because it's so simple. It's very, very, very easy when you go wrong to spot where you're going wrong and to put it right. So we do the coaching videos. There is quite a few people who have one coaching video, then three months later or six months later when they believe that they've got to the pinnacle of what they can do with that one, they'll come back for some more advanced stuff. Advanced coaching, advanced finishing, all that sort of stuff. All, all those elements that are not included in the channel. Right, so here we are up in the studio and what we're going to do now is the demo throws. So what we're going to do is from where you are now, this is where hopefully you'll get to. So this is what you're looking to achieve. As I said before, setting yourself up on the hockey, get yourself in the right place. Dart comes out and it's from here, it's in front of your face, you just allow the shoulders to rotate out slightly. And then it's just a matter of just... Dead relaxed, throwing the board, the darts to the board like that. This is first thing, I've not thinking I had any warm up arrows or anything like that. And it's just 60 as if it's walking in the park, as if it's just having a walk down, a stroll down the road. As you can see, there's no darts. As you can see, there's no darts that have gone off to one side. There's no darts that have gone low, really, or high, really. Obviously, first thing in the morning, like I'm doing now, it's all about warming the arm up. And warming the arm up is all about getting that throw correct and nice and relaxed. There you go. This is where you'll get to. That is my second visit of the day. And as you can see, and that is one of the reasons why I will do, if I want 120, I will go that way. And it just blows people's minds. And, it finger, and if you're in a competition, and you've got the cojones to have a go at that and land it, it just blows people's brains out. And you think <laughs> you've won the match before you've even started. <sighs> Adjusting the throw is simplicity in itself. So as you're looking at the treble 20 like that, if you want a treble 19, all you do is look at the treble 19 and adjust your body down. Like so. Obviously not throwing for the treble 19, but just getting the group in. But you can understand what I'm talking about, the way that you move it around. It, it, the throw remains exactly the same. The arm speed alters very slightly, but your brain will do that. You like naturality. Once you get used to pitching that dart for the treble 17 or the treble 19, which will come in a matter of a couple of weeks, you'll just be leaps and bounds, coming on leaps and bounds. Right, again, it's first thing in the morning, got a bit of sleep in my eyes. First thing, for, don't forget, exactly the same if you're going for bullseyes, it's just a matter of placing the dart where you want it to go. Oh. 
So you see there, same thing for the bull's eyes. It's just exactly the same thing. All you're doing is you're just placing that dart where you want it to go. There's no throwing it at it, making an effort out of it. It's this is becomes effortless. It becomes I dare to say dead easy because your body naturally sinks into that and once you've got the confidence of knowing that you can put those darts where you want them to go it's the stairs your physical ability improves and then your mental ability improves as well so it just gets better and better and better right so that's your demonstration throws you can see it there straight up straight up exactly what I've told you I absolutely promise you Chris if you stick to this and you walk this path within the space of a month or so, you will be a totally, totally different dart player. So, thanks for commissioning the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been informative and it turns you into the dart player you've always wanted to be, which it's done for thousands of others. So, thanks very much, Chris, for commissioning the video. And don't forget, always, 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 totally hockey. Okay.